Hello everybody and welcome to this Roman Travel Vlog for part two. You're gonna run here the hello, my name is Sam and I post lots of travel, lifestyle, Disney and theatre content. So if you like that kind of thing, make sure that you're subscribing so you don't miss out on anything. But yeah, as I said, I'm in Rome and we've had quite a few nice days here. I definitely recommend you go and check out part one and I've also done a whole like, itinerary planning guide for Rome. So go and check that out on, in the playlist. But um, today we're actually going and heading over to the Vatican Museum. It's really, really early. It's only like 6.15. Um, but we got a special early entry ticket into the Vatican City, so that would be really, really great. So we're going to walk over to the Vatican City now. It's going to take about an hour to get there, but um, it'll be nice kind of just walking through Rome whilst it's quiet and cool and just kind of take it all in. So yeah, it's going to take about an hour to get there, and then really today is all dedicated to the Vatican. So yeah, it's going to be really, really great. So join us on this adventure. Let's go. Here's my outfit of the day. So for the Vatican Museum, you have to make sure that your shoulders and knees are covered and yeah i just had to make sure that that was like make sure that was following that for today so this is my outfit of the day so i'm wearing this shirt and um, i got this all from Shein. so i got this from that and i'm wearing these also and i've got my air force on as well so that is my outfit for the day it's gonna be very very hot but it'll be fine i'm sure so yeah, it's about two and a half miles to the Vatican City from our hotel, so it is quite a walk. Like I said, it's about an hour, um, but the temperature right now is so perfect, and I don't know, I just love like early mornings. We're gonna go wake up early one day, like coming up, I just go to the Trophy Fountain, just because it's so packed over there. I feel quite uncomfortable around that area, really. It's your wits about you when you're kind of around the Trophy Fountain area. But um, we're going to do that early morning just so that we can get a nice quiet spot and do that. But yeah, it seems to be pretty much straight up. Um, we literally rely on Google Maps all the time for our direction. So just, I would say just to make sure you've got enough data on your phone because you just need to make sure you've got Google Maps. That sun is so bright. Um, but yeah, it shouldn't take too long and we'll be there. I didn't realise that on route we had to walk down Spanish steps. So we're taking that off now, but we'll come back afterwards, but it's really, really quiet because it's, well, it's half six, so it's the perfect time to come if you want to get some quiet pictures of the Spanish steps. So yeah, that just shows you how quiet it is if you come at like half six in the morning. It's so quiet. We've got some really nice photos as well, but we're definitely going to come back as well. I'll show you what it's like a bit later on in the day, but this will be packed later. We've just crossed the river over a bridge and yeah, hopefully now it's not going to be too long. It's definitely getting a bit warmer now. So on route to the Vatican City, this here is Castel Sant'Angelo. Um, it's actually so big, I can't actually believe how big it is. And there we go, Vatican City is right in the distance. Hopefully not too long now. We need to go and meet our tour guide because we've got like an early tour, so we're gonna meet them. But yeah, it's absolutely stunning, look at that. Okay, and here's the actual entrance to the Museum Vatican City. If you're visiting the Vatican, that's where you would go. It's a really, really long queue, as you can see. We're just meeting our tour guide over here on the other side of the road. Right, we're in now. We've got our um, little thing for our tour, so we're going to do that. So the tour guide just said that this here is like a spiral staircase, which they don't actually use anymore, but it was the entrance. Right, so the tour guide seems a little bit unorganised, but um, it is so busy. Consider this as an early morning tour, it's so busy, but here is St Peter's Basilica. Okay, so you're not allowed to actually go and take any photographs or talk at all in, whilst you're inside the Sistine Chapel. So the tour guide's just kind of talking us through the art. It's actually really, really fascinating, but we have to kind of do that outside. This here is really fascinating actually. It's a, a, a like hand painted map of Italy before obviously they had satellite or anything like that. Okay, I can't believe how quiet it is in here, but this here is like 
all of like the Pope's different vehicles and that kind of thing, so, like carriages that he's been on and like cars and that kind of thing. It's quite a big room actually. Um, but yeah, I'll show you around. But look at this, look at the gold on that. not sure why every single pope has to have a different carriage that looked the exact same. But yeah, it's so quiet as we've worked out the only difference in the carriage is little emblem that's in the middle. That is the only difference. Like my life hack is get yourself a foldable fan that you just go and put down your shirt like this. It just keeps you cool. Nice. Okay, so we just went and finished at the Sistine Chapel and we looked at the Vatican Museums, which we absolutely loved. It was really, really good, nice. Um, I'm not really a museum kind of person, to be honest, so we're kind of seeing the same thing over and over again. But if you like, definitely, like, if you like art, it's definitely the place to go and seeing all of like, the artwork and all that kind of stuff. It's been really, really nice. We're now going to head over to St. Peter's Basilica. That's the kind of final thing that we need to do over in the Vatican City. So we're going to go over and do that. I think you're allowed to film in there, but I'll just double check and see. Yeah, the entrance to it, so we're going to join the queue. And it's that area that we saw earlier on. It's so busy. I'm going to try and get some pictures though. I don't think it's quite as hot as it was yesterday, but the heat is definitely, I'm feeling it. So if I've got my fan, definitely helping out. But um, yeah, hopefully the line isn't going to be too long because the line for this is actually all outside. So you have to queue pretty much outside the whole time to go and get in. So I don't know how long it takes. It's currently about 11 o'clock. So that's the sort of time it is. And I'll tell you how long it is around that time. But um, I'll give you my full review on the early experience. Um, later on in the hotel. It is so much bigger than I expected it to be. Like, it is huge and there are so many people in here. But, yeah, it's going to be just amazing to explore this building. Words cannot describe how beautiful it was in there. Like, honestly, the camera just doesn't do it justice. Here in the gift shop, you can go and get lots of different postcards with the Pope. So in the shop, they've got lots of different, like, magnets. Obviously, that's like the spiral staircase that we saw. They do um, Christmas ornaments like the ball balls again with the artwork from the Sistine Chapel. There it is. Right, so we've now gone and finished at the Vatican. We spent about three, four hours over there, which was really, really nice. I feel like that was the perfect amount of time to spend over there. But now we're just kind of like following the river and we are going to go over to Chester Bay, right? And we're going to go over and grab some lunch over there. Also need to try a gelato today, so we're going to definitely try and get that done. And we've got a really, really nice meal book for this evening. So I feel like now we've done the Vatican, it's all now about the food and just yeah, embracing all that. So that is the plan right now. So Nanarella is where we're going to be eating for lunch. It smells honestly delicious, so I'm excited for this one. Okay, so here's the menu for Nanarella. I've definitely seen this on TikTok before. It's definitely been recommended, but they have lots of different starters, lots of different pastas. I really, really want to try this cacio e pepe. Um, I will have it at some point, I'm sure. Um, they have all these other types of pasta. Lasagna is one that I also really want to try whilst I'm on this trip. Um, let's see what else they've got. Oh yeah, pizza. I need to try pizza. I think I'm actually going to get a pizza today. They all look really, really good. Um, but yeah, it's going to be a good meal. So here it is, my first proper Italian pizza. Cannot wait to eat this. I've also got a Coke. I um, fancied Coke today, but yeah, honestly, it looks amazing. It's a really, really big portion too. Well, our lunch at Nanarella's was really, really nice. I actually loved it. It was my first real Italian pizza that I had, so it was just amazing. Like, lived up to the hype. 
Um, and I love also that when you go and you pay the bill, you get a, a lollipop, which is amazing. Just uh, what you need after a meal. So we're now gonna go and start heading back towards our hotel, but we're gonna go and get some ice cream before. So this gelato place is called Venchi, and it's located right near the Trevi Fountain and it just looks amazing. I feel like it's a very tourist trap one, but I just need it. They also have a little shop at the side which sell their like Venti chocolate. It's very, very expensive, like 20 euros, um, but it makes a really nice gift actually, like lots of different chocolate. They have like a pick and mix section at the back also, which you can get, um, but yeah, it looks amazing. We ended up going back to the hotel for a nap, but it was very much needed. It's literally so, so hot, so we just needed to nap. But we're going to this outdoor restaurant called Il Chianti. It has a really, really nice outdoor area, so I can't wait to eat here. Lovely. Um, we're now just going to go and do some shopping, just get some souvenirs and that kind of thing. So I'll show you what you can kind of get when you're here. So if you've been watching me for a while now, you know that I absolutely love a pin badge. And these are all the pin badges that you can get here. I actually got this one, I think it's this one here, earlier at the Vatican City. Um, they're two euros for a pin badge, which is really good actually. They've got lots of different like, magnets, lots of the Colosseum and the Vatican and all that kind of stuff. even more magnets over here they're all one euro each which i think is actually really really good really good price and after another day of fun our second full day in rome has come to an end um i had a really really lovely day i really enjoyed going to the vatican museums and seeing all of that um i think you could go and spend a whole day there for me it wasn't really for me like as i said like i'm not really a museum sort of person so I found that it was quite repetitive seeing the same things over and over again but if that's your thing like you absolutely love it but for me it was really just going and seeing the Sistine Chapel and the Peter's Basilica those are two things that like I wanted to see and it was really nice to go and see them today so I really really loved that. In terms of like the early entry tour I think in a way it was kind of worth it because we actually got to see the Sistine Chapel early and actually it wasn't too busy however I did find that the tour guide today was a little bit kind of unorganized I would say and I just found that she like we met her like 30 minutes before I guess um but she didn't go and give us the like headset and the earphones and all that kind of stuff she didn't have our tickets ready so when we got to the Vatican she had to go and then get our tickets and by the time all of that had kind of happened the Vatican was open to the general public so I don't think we really saw the benefit of the early entry. I mean, the queue was really, really long early in the morning, so we definitely got in straight away, definitely got through that queue nice and quickly. But I just found that we didn't actually get to do anything any earlier because we spent such a long time just kind of faffing around at the beginning. So that's what I personally found. I don't, I do think it was quite nice actually having a tour guide to kind of just talk about the art, or just so you kind of know the history behind it. Um, and, and kind of what the Sistine Chapel was like before it got kind of restored by Michelangelo. So it was interesting to hear all of that. But yeah, I don't know. I have kind of mixed mixed opinions on the early entry, in all honesty. Um, I think there was benefits, but I also think that there was times when it could have been a lot better. But uh, yeah, that's just my opinion. But yeah, food today was really, really lovely. Um, tomorrow we're going to be heading to the Trevi Fountain. We're going to go to the Pantheon tomorrow. And yeah, we've got quite a lot of like, I guess like real like Rome things to do. We're going to also go to the park, the Villa Borghese Park, and um, spend an afternoon there. Although uh, the reason I planned it, to, we're going to be going there about four o'clock, but the reason we planned for it to be about that time was because I was thinking it's going to be a lot cooler, although they're finding that like four o'clock seems to be like the hottest part of the day. It just seemed really unbearable at that time. That's why we ended up coming back today because it just was unbearable. 
But um, yeah, so obviously I will see you tomorrow. That's it for today. Thank you for watching today and I'll see you tomorrow. Good morning everybody and welcome to a brand new day. We're just now gonna head to the Pantheon. It's about 8.30, so we had a nice little lay in this morning, had our breakfast, which is really, really nice. And yeah, we're now gonna walk to the Pantheon, which is about a 25 minute walk away, so it's not too bad. I don't know whether you now have to pay for the Pantheon. I heard rumors before that you now have to pay five euros each, whereas it used to be a free thing to do. But I'll let you know if you have to pay for it at the moment. But um, yeah, I'm really excited to see it. So it shouldn't be too long now. I'm actually saying that we might forecast rain today, although it's only like 10% chance, but then clouds definitely look like looking a bit grey under there but I'm actually not going to complain like I feel like with this heat a bit of rain would make me so happy to be honest so yeah, it's currently like 30 degrees and it's about 8.45 now nine o'clock we're just outside the Pantheon and this here is the queue it's a very very long queue I'll let you know how long it takes for us to get in now five euros to go inside um which is expected i heard that before it's a shame because it used to be free but see i don't think this queue's actually going to be too long we seem to be moving all right but um it's much better to do this queue early in the morning before the sun gets too intense otherwise it's just going to be a horrible queuing experience so you just get here a little bit early whilst it's still quite cool and then go and do it that way because otherwise it's just be too hot we're almost in and they've got this like Hiroshima anniversary band that's going to be playing. We've got our tickets, it was five euros each, and I think we waited about 25 minutes to get in, so yeah, but here we are now. So we're inside the Pantheon now, and this is actually the best preserved building in Rome, and considering how old it is. There's actually no windows in the Pantheon at all, but the belief is is that if you're in the Pantheon, the only way that God can see you is through the Oculus, which is up there, up at the top. So, yeah, just a little fact. This here is a perfect location for getting a really good picture of you outside the Pantheon. Literally, if you just stand in front of this fountain and you've also got the Pantheon in front of you, it's just great. Also, these here are an absolute lifesaver. So just, I end up filling up my water bottle. Just take this empty water bottle with you wherever you go and just fill them up with these fountains here and the water is so cold, it's honestly amazing. Well, oh, I actually really enjoyed visiting the Pantheon. It's a lot smaller than I actually expected it to be, but I really enjoyed going over there and see what it was. It was five euros, which I don't think is worth it really. Um, you can also go and get like tour, um, like the little like tour guide things also, uh, which we didn't do for that one. But you know, it was good to go. I'm glad I've ticked that off my bucket list now and seen that. It is really fascinating though, how they managed to hide at the dome from the outside. Like I just don't know how they do it. It's just amazing how they do that. Another thing I've noticed about the Pantheon is that even though they've got like a strict dress code, they didn't really care about it. I saw lots of people with their shoulders out and shorts way above the knee. So, that one didn't, they didn't really seem to mind. Although for me, I think it's better just to be cautious and just make sure you're dressed because you don't want to be turned away. Uh, but we've now gone and made it over to Piazza Navona where there's like three really nice fountains. We're gonna go and get pictures outside there. It's like tradition for us to go and take a picture outside a fountain. So doing that every single time. Um, but yeah, it's really, really nice. It's pretty quiet as well. It's only about a four minute walk from the Pantheon. So I'll show you around Piazza Navona, but it's really, really beautiful. Thank you. 
Let's have a little sit down for the moment, but I just thought I'd say one of my little tips is definitely don't be afraid to go and ask people to take your photo, especially like in Rome where there's so many different couples and that kind of thing. And obviously like they'd like pictures of them too that aren't selfies, like actually full body photos. So um, definitely like don't be afraid to ask because obviously they'll take a photo of you and then you can take a photo of them in return. And I think they really like it. Um, but yeah, but like, I wouldn't say don't be afraid of just like asking somebody to take your photo. Like the worst thing I'm gonna do is say no. Um, I don't think anybody's gonna go running off with your photo, so don't even be scared about that. Um, but just have a like look around and see like, is there anybody who you like trust? If you see like a couple or anything like that, like a young couple and just be like, oh, like, can you take a photo of us? And then just do the same for them in return and they'll absolutely love it. So highly recommend that, but it's really, really nice. It's not too hot at the moment as well, which I'm absolutely loving. Although I know when it gets like three or four o'clock, it is gonna be absolutely boiling. And also the clouds have kind of all disappeared now. So the rain definitely didn't come. Um, but you know, it's just nice having a little chill around this area, Piazza Navona, it's really lovely. Right, so just made it to the Trevi Fountain. It's about 10.40 and it's a Friday. And as you can see, they've fully drained the Trevi Fountain and now refilling it again. They're like collecting all the money over there. Um, so just be aware that on a Friday, and I think on a Wednesday too, they go and they drain the Trevi Fountain and then obviously they need to refill it. Um, but it takes a little bit of time. So that's why literally there's nobody down here this is what the crowds are like. Obviously we're going to come back for an early morning visit to the Trevi Fountain, but yeah, just be aware, just research beforehand what dates and uh, what day they actually go and drain the Trevi Fountain for the money. Um, I'll put them down on in the video, so I'll just confirm. But definitely on a Friday morning they'll go and they'll drain the Trevi Fountain. Well, that literally just proves that sometimes your plans, even though you have an itinerary, things happen, which means that you obviously you can't be following the itinerary, literally to a T. So, um, we're gonna go now to Beacom.tv, which is like these some shops. We're gonna go and do some shopping whilst I'm here and see what there is, so I'll show you that. But yeah, that just proves that sometimes that happens. But yeah, I'll find out the dates and times where that goes and shuts them to collect money and stuff. Right, so we've made it to Beacom.tv, and it is actually all designer shops, to be fair. It's like your Tiffany and Michael Kors, and all that kind of stuff. Um, so I don't really think I'm actually gonna do any shopping here. But literally in front of us is the Spanish Steps, which is amazing. So literally right in front, the Spanish Steps is there. So yeah, literally all designer shops around here, but that's where we're heading. So I showed you yesterday just how quiet the Spanish Steps was if you go at like half six in the morning. And this is it now. It is dead on 11 o'clock and this is kind of the crowds that you're looking at. So it definitely is worth, if you want that picture, get in here really early in the morning, just so you can get that picture. Um, but yeah, this is now 11 o'clock and this is the crowds. Right, we just got some really nice pictures outside the Spanish Steps. and. Um, a good little tip actually is go to the left staircase, so the furthest to the left, and it's literally empty, so it's definitely worth doing that. See, so yeah, if you come to this left staircase here, and then literally on there, we've got some really nice pictures, so highly recommend doing that. I'd say most people seem to go to the central staircase, and then you've literally got like so many people. So if you're going to get here slightly later, definitely come to the left staircase. But right, a little bit further down from Via Condotti, there's a Lego store. So we're just having a look in there to see. My brother is obsessed with Lego, so I'm going to go and see if they've got any like little mini like Roman figures or anything like that. As you know, wherever there is a Disney store, I have to go see what's inside. This Winnie the Pooh collection is really really nice. It's seventeen ninety nine. It's really nice like notebook and pen. A lot of this like get ready to go back to school kind of stuff. Um, this is bags. The whole like fifty percent off section. So like a stitch water bottle. This like purse here. I don't think that's the sale price. I think it's actually like twelve euros. These mugs are really really cute as well with your initials, but I don't think they've actually got my one. Really, really good, $14.99. I obviously had to make my way into Zara. I love this shop so much. Um, got to find where men's is though. I think men's is the top. This is probably the biggest Zara I've ever, ever been in. Like, just escalators and escalators and escalators. Men's is up on the top floor, I think. I probably won't end up buying anything. I never like seem to actually buy anything whilst I'm here. I always find it's more expensive here than anywhere else, but we'll see. I do love this style of shirt here. Um, it's 40 euros though, um, which again, I still feel like it's more expensive than you'd get in the UK. So definitely not worth it. Okay, so for lunch, we've come back to the Pantheon and we've gone to this like deli kind of shop where they make these like deli sort of sandwiches. 
looks and smells absolutely amazing in here. Can't wait to eat. This is actually the oldest deli shop in Rome. Okay, so this is what I've gone for, so it's actually really big. It's the pork deli. Honestly, it looks incredible. Let's give it a go. Very fresh. Very, very peppery as well. I like it. It's that time of day where we need a gelato, so we're going to go to this place here called Gelati, I think it's called. So I've heard that if you want a good gelato, it should all be very, very plain kind of colours. There shouldn't be anything that's really, really bright or standing out. So this Bailey's one look absolutely incredible. Not sure what to get to be honest. It's melting already, but I ended up going for the pistachio and the salted caramel. Right, we're just making our way up to Villa Borghese, which is a park, but look at this really beautiful piazza up here. I can't believe how many steps there are to get up to this park. We made it. Um, there's lots of people all over here, so I feel like there's going to be a really, really nice view of the city from over here. I'll show you what it's like. There's a nice breeze to go this afternoon, which is perfect for visiting the park. You can see just how big this park is, and it's actually heart shaped, which is really, really cute. But yeah, this is Billable Gaze. I can't believe how loud the crickets are. Literally, throughout this whole park, you've just all you can hear, and they're so loud. If you are a Disney Parks lover just like me, does this not give you Haunted Mansion vibes? Grim Grinny goes, come out to socialize. Yeah, one of them ones. It just started to rain. Literally, it was so needed. I felt it cool down and then now it's like beginning to spit, so it's just perfect. It's just literally what was needed. It is so windy, but I'm not actually complaining. But just look on the web wrap, and it says that there's a thunderstorm warning, a rain warning, and a wind warning. So, yeah, um, tomorrow's going to be a lot cooler. It's saying that tomorrow's going to be like 27 degrees, so a little bit cooler than it's been recently. It's been like 34, 35 on these other days. But, um, yeah, it's saying now that there's going to be a severe thunderstorm warning, um, although the app isn't saying there's going to be any thunderstorm. So. I'm not too sure, but I'm sure it'll be fine. I'm glad that in a way that it's cooled it down a little bit. Um, and who doesn't love a thunderstorm anyway? So it's a bit like being in Florida, really, this weather. Like it's been so hot all day, and then all of a sudden we have this like big gust of wind and thunderstorms and rain. Very, very odd. But yeah, we're just going to leave this park now. It's been really nice walking around, but um, yeah, just going to head back to the hotel, have a little afternoon nap, I think. And yeah, we've got a nice restaurant booked for this evening. Um, which is back towards the Pantheon way, so we'll have that do that walk later on. But I just want to go back to the hotel, freshen up a little bit, and get ready for dinner tonight. I just woke up from my nap to this. It is torrential rain, literally torrential. Well, that rain has certainly cooled it down. Um, it's quite chilly actually, to be honest, but I'm not going to complain. I'm going to enjoy it whilst it lasts. Tomorrow I'll be saying it is being it's really really hot again. So yeah, we're going to make our way now to the restaurant. We're eating at a restaurant called Agua Dolce. Um, again, this is a, like one that I've seen quite a lot be recommended on social media and stuff like that. So I'm sure it'll be really, really nice. It's got a really nice menu. So yeah, I'll show you. It's like it's right near the Chubby Fountain and Pantheon sort of area. We are absolutely drenched. Like. What even is this weather? Okay, so we've made it to our restaurant Agra Dolce. We're sitting outside because we booked an outdoor table like three months ago. Um, but here's the menu. Um, so they've got the like traditional like bruschetta, that kind of thing. Um, lots of other stuff, obviously like your pastas. I'm probably going to get pasta from this one. To be honest, the tagliatelle sounds really, really nice actually. Um, they have your, like, your traditional pastas, uh, like your carbonara and that kind of stuff. And lots of other kind of 
meats and salads and yeah literally it's a huge menu pizzas yeah it looks really nice but the they've moved us inside so so uh, heavy the rain down there She moved us inside because it was raining so bad. Um, but we're now just gonna go for a little evening walk. We're gonna go and see some of the things. Gonna go head towards the Coliseum actually and see that all lit up for the night time. Okay. <laughs> I just lost my mum and she, she could see me but I couldn't see her. And she said that I was like frowning. And yeah, it was funny to be there. quiet around here actually it's definitely worth coming to visit here at night time especially if you want that like a nice quiet picture without there being many people around of the Coliseum um, just kind of couldn't and walk around the whole thing I'm um, just trying to find the best spot really for a picture um, it's a little bit annoying because like the lighting is quite annoying so it just looks like it's like I look like a half moon to be fair in most of the photos so got to try and like find somewhere where I can get a nice picture but yeah it's amazing We are back in our hotel room. It was really lovely just going for a nice evening walk, especially because it's not been too hot this evening. It's actually been quite chilly to be fair with the rain. So it's been nice just kind of walk around. It's just been nice and comfortable to do that. And seeing the Coliseum at night was really, really lovely and get all in pictures. So yeah, I had a really lovely evening. That is the end of the second part of this Rome series, but obviously I'll be back on Thursday with uh, another vlog series. Um, Tomorrow I'm going to be going to Pompeii, so we're going to have like a little day excursion to Pompeii. It's a whole 12 hour excursion which we booked through British Airways but I'll share more about that in the next vlog. I'm very very excited to do that um, and kind of leave Rome for a little bit but obviously seeing something that's so amazing in the history and all of that in Pompeii is going to be just fantastic. So I look forward to seeing you there. Uh, but if you enjoyed this vlog make sure that you're hitting that like button and also make sure you're subscribed to this channel so you don't miss out on any of the other vlogs um obviously there's gonna be quite a lot of videos in this rome series and i'd hate for you to miss out on all of that but again thank you so so much for watching and i will see you real soon bye guys